What's up guys, Chaos here, bringing you guys another video. I know what you guys are thinking, same fit as last video. That's right, we recorded two videos in one day, we're knocking them out. I'm just going to ask you guys to please continue to hit that like button, continue to hit that sub button, and continue to hit that notification button. Really appreciate you guys. Let's jump into this weekend league gameplay, man. Alright boys, so we have another weekend league game for play for you guys today. We're playing the PA Shot Wheel Specialist himself, I winning. This guy spam Shot Wheel, does different setups from it. And it's actually really good and, and, and it's really tough to stop uh, just because of the different things you can do with Playmaker and there's three different routes in the play that are really good. The wheel, the post, and the and the crosser are all really good. So you see we're getting an early dose of it right there. He highballs the wheel, picks up 20. I'm telling you, it's, it's tough to stop, especially because I, I don't think, I don't remember playing him much this year, if at all. And right here you see Playmaker's the crosser back. He was about to have it open, but our spy gets there just in time to, to hit him as he throws. So second and 10. Unfortunate right there not to get a, not to get a, um, sorry, excuse me, not to get a, a sack instead of a knockout, but here's what it is. He gets the fade the next play. Right there, he has his wheel and misses his read, but right there, he tries to highball it right as. I could not believe he made that read. I was shocked he threw that. Right there, I'm probably just throwing the ball away, but to each their own. Back to shot wheel again. I'm on everything. Nothing's really open. Nothing's really open. We're going to send our spot here. He's trying to force one in again, but we knock it out. I mean, this guy's just an absolute madman, if you ask me. This guy just throws kind of whatever. But it is what it is, man. Right there, he hits his running back out of the backfield. But he's going to have to settle for three. Honestly, that's cool with me. He had a really easy, simple drive. Picked up three huge passes. Bam, bam, bam. Got down the field. But we made him settle for three. So that's a win in my book. Threes aren't going to win you games this mad in this type of Madden. Madden 19, they're not going to win you the game. So I'm not, I'm not mad at giving up three ever. Is what it is. Right here, we're just trying to feel it out on his drive now. So as you guys always know, I always tell you guys, I, I probably sound monotonous, but every single game, the first drive on defense and the first drive on offense are both the same thing. You feel out what he wants to do on defense and what he wants to do on offense. Right here, I, I can already see what he's doing and I can pick up dots and learn on what I'm gonna what I'm gonna be successful with throughout the game. So right there, we go to verticals, pick up a good chunk. Now I know he put a hard flat out there, so I'm gonna continue to notice that in the future, knowing he himself with the user has to cover the corner route if he's gonna continuously play hard flats out there. Next play here, he, I also notice he's not uh, he's not flipping uh, a lot, so he doesn't always have a nickel on my side. But right here, he's also he's uh, he also did uh, flip it right there, but he he's not flipping it every single time. Like he doesn't have auto flip on, is what I should say. If you notice someone doesn't have auto flip on, you know that they're not going to be as successful blitzing. So right here, you guys can see that the nickel is on my tight end side. They're not going to be successful blitzing as if the nickel was on the non-running back, non-tight end side. So that's something you can also notice that they're probably going to bless you more when you're on a certain side. We get seven. We go to our wheel route high point. Love it. Right there, he goes to shot wheel again. He playmakers it across. I'm telling you, this guy, the first couple of drives was like, what the heck is this guy doing? He's just doing crazy stuff. Like he had two fades, a crosser, and playmakers back right there. So tough to stop, especially when you don't know what's coming. Right after that play, though, I decided I'm manning up. I'm manning up the crosser every play. I'm not giving him that anymore. No more playmaker. I don't want to give that up. So I'm, I'm manning him up every play now. If someone's killing you with playmaker, guys, whether it's a drag, whether it's like this guy with a crosser or a deep route, just man it up. If you man it up, ideally, it won't give up the playmaker. You won't get burnt. Now, sometimes with speed purposes or maybe a weird angle, maybe they'll get open, but it's going to be a lot, lot less frequent. So, third and inches here. I really am expecting to run. I'm trying to blow it up. I'm manning up everybody, but we just don't get home. Great drive by him. Great answer drive to go back up 10-7. If we'd gotten a stop there, he would have been in some big trouble. So, important drive by him. Now, I'm trying to go to get, pick up a big chunk. I noticed that he hasn't blitzed me too heavy with the nickel. If he has blitz, he's blitzed with the middle linebacker from 3-3-5. And that blitz is going to get home every once in a while. But not often, especially when you have PA. So I'm okay with just letting him blitz there and not really having to worry about his pressure. Right here, he does send an extra guy, sends five. I see him sending that guy. I hit my backside in route. Odell being Odell. Odell's spin is crazy. His break tackle is crazy. He catches everything. 
great wide receiver, and I love getting him the ball in space. So, but I'm thinking right here, time management wise, there's two minutes left. He only has two timeouts. I want this to be the last drive. I want to go into halftime up 14 10. I want it to be my ball at a halftime, and then we can go win the game. However, you have to take a touchdown when they give you a touchdown, right? Can't argue with that. Nice playmaker up the field, and we move the chains. I mean, sorry, and we, and we get into the end zone right here. He man, he tries to play maker back that crosser like he did before, but he's manned up with a fast player. Nothing doing. I really, another reason why I was okay with taking that touchdown, obviously you got to take your touchdown when they give it to you, just in case you, because you might not get it again. You might have to set up for three. But I'm also okay with it because I just felt like I was starting to get a rhythm for what he was doing. He wanted to just play, run uh, shot wheel and play maker back all the time. Right there, he was manned. But he playmakered it back and he was able to get open. Now, I didn't think he should have been able to get open. However, I do guess that it's probably because I cross-manned it, not straight-manned it. So now that I saw that he was able to get that, I decided to straight-man it instead. Just because I don't think it'll get open against the cross anyways. And I'm not going to allow him to do that playmaker back anymore. It's too many free yards and I don't like it. Fourth and one here, probably the biggest play of the game. If I get off the field here, I'm going to be up at least four at halftime, maybe seven with the ball at a, uh, at a half. So huge play coming up, and he goes to the run. I didn't expect to run there. I really don't. Fourth and one, people usually don't come out in shotguns or run inside zone, so I think that was a pretty good call by him. I really was expecting pass, so good call. Right here, he probably had a touchdown ag right there. I'm not going to lie to you. I tried to get aggressive. I wanted to try to knock him back out of field goal range, which probably isn't the smartest thing to do in mutt. But he probably did have a touchdown. Probably had it again, to be honest with you. And he goes to it one last time. And he probably had it again. But to be honest with you, it's it's a chess match, man. Like, he wanted that touchdown. I could see it. The, the outside streak, he wanted it. He knew I was cross manning. But I had moved Dion a little bit over to make sure he guarded it early. And after that, I made sure I was sending dogs. I sent six at him. So I'm expecting to get home there. So I'm not too worried about it, but to be honest with you, I probably shouldn't have given him that three straight times because in this game, if he gets that ag off, he's probably catching it. Right here, we're just trying to get three. If we can get three to go up four before halftime, we're in really good shape. We're honestly in good shape up one, but four is a lot better than one just because a touchdown will make it a two possession. And this is a big play here. We're going to our corner route, and we just were able to fit it in. So now we have a good chance here. I only need about five yards. The only problem is I don't have any timeouts. So... He should have been guarding the sideline because the only way I get three here is if I get out of bounds because I could not get stopped in bounds and been able to get off my kick without a, without a timeout. But he gives me my table route. Perfect scenario for me. I'm up four. Now if I go get seven, game's over. I love the spot I'm in. It's a really, really nice spot. You'd love to be in this spot. This When you go into a game against a player that can compete with you and can beat, with you, beat you, you want to be up one possession with the ball at half. That's pretty much the ideal situation that you work for every single game. And I was able to get it. Now, we have to put together a drive now. We put it, We did a good job on the first half. Now we need to make sure we put together a drive. Right here, I'm looking for, I was looking for the bomb. I tried to get him deep. I might have been able to throw it. I Looking at it at a second glance, I might have been able to throw the fade outside. But the way, if you're playing good offense, right, and he hasn't shown the ability to stop me, you don't want to force anything because he hasn't shown the ability to stop me yet. So don't force anything. Don't throw a stupid pick and you'll be okay. Right there, we overthrow our streak, but we go to our wheel route. I didn't. I don't go to this play often, which is probably a mistake. It's actually a really good setup. And I saw that it was going to be open right there and I went to it and it worked out for me. So we moved the chains. Right here, he sends he sends three uh, while spying his end. And right there, the, in, the curl route was actually naked. If you want to rewind... By all means, go ahead and do so. That curl route was butt naked. I remember being extremely angry. For some reason, he just runs the opposite way, and Vic just throws it right to the defender. I don't know what that was. Unfortunate break for me. Fortunate break for him. Now it's a one-possession game, and it hits ball, and we have to get a stop. So it made it a game, and you know what? If we don't throw that pick, you probably, you probably don't get this game on YouTube. So you know what? I'm glad it happened, just so I get the YouTube content for you guys. Shout out to the EA with the fluky. <laughs> But fourth and one, he goes back to the run. This time I was ready for the run. If you saw my play art, I was blitzing and I manned up every single other person else on my field other than the person blitzing. And it uh, and it didn't pay off for me, but I was ready for the run. You need to make sure you know tendencies when you're playing people. Fourth and one last time, he ran the ball. This time, fourth and one, I expect him to run the ball again, which is what he did. 
right there. That was the bomb he was trying to throw the whole first half when I manned everybody up. That was the exact bomb. And maybe it wasn't a touchdown in the first half because Deion Sanders is so good in this game. And he goes over and, and rips it off for me and picks it off and we get the ball back, which is perfect. Right here, hit our post across the middle, move the chains, we should need to move. So we're playing well on offense. He's done a little bit better job this half, especially with that pick on that curl route. Right here, I tried to take a page out of his book, tried to playmaker the, the deep route across, but he was on it. So we just take off with Vic, take our free three. That's cool. The playmaker ain't for everybody, boys, and that type of playmaker ain't for me, I guess. Didn't work out for the, for the kid, but we're continuing to move the chance. We're doing a good job on offense. As I said, I don't want to make a mistake here. I at least want to get three. I've played good defense, especially after that first possession, and I've played really, uh, I've played really efficient offense, so I don't want to make any mistakes here. I don't want to throw a stupid pick, and I don't, and I don't want to make sure, I don't want to leave here with no points. I need at least three. Right here, we have our crosser open. I know that was a touchdown. And we just couldn't get our, our quarterback to make the throw. It is what it is. Right here, nothing's really open. He's doing a good job using my crosser. I'm just maneuvering the pocket here, trying to see if something will come open. Trying to see if something will come open. We throw it deep. And I mean, guys, get yourself a Randy Moss. Put him on the team. Make it happen. Sell all your coins or sell all your cards to get yourself a Randy Moss. Don't sell coins, guys. I don't promote it. Uh, but, <laughs> oh, man. Randy Moss, play of the day. Puts us up with two possessions, which pretty much puts this game in a lock. Uh, we just need to make sure that we don't give up anything quick. Now, he can get a touchdown on this drive. That's not the end of the world. You don't want to, obviously, give up a touchdown, but it's not the end of the world if he gets one. You just want to make him work for it. And you don't want to give up anything deep. Right there, we lurked the only fadey out on the field out there. Nothing doing. We got Jamal Adams. Now, I'm just going to work this clock. If I can work this clock now and just try to... doesn't really matter. I don't. I really don't need to pass at all if I, don't, if I don't want to. There's nothing wrong with giving him the ball back. Simply because I'm up two possessions. I just don't want to do anything silly. So just run the ball. If you guys are in this position, especially in a game that you expect, that you think is meaningful, maybe it's a tournament, maybe it's a weekend league game. Whatever is important to you, run the ball there. Clock out. If you have to punch to him, punch to him. Go right ahead. It's a two-possession game. But looks like my opponent's had enough. Guys, we played really well. It's a tricky opponent with that PA shot wheel. He does a good job with it. Hope you guys enjoy, man. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. And, guys, I really, really, really appreciate y'all. Love y'all, man. Take it easy. Peace.